This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Jimmy from Boston. A lot of elderly complaining out of you both last cast. I mean, I can't imagine what you two grandpas did when you met up this weekend. You race your scooters, you maybe play some pinochle. Do you guys take the Peter Pan bus to play bingo at the casino? Shit must have gone real crazy in between the naps and the all-you-can-eat buffets. <sighs> I don't think I've ever done this to start a show before, but we just finished the show, and I thought maybe I should fill you in real quick on what we're talking about, because it was a fun show, but we just came shooting right out of the cannon. I did shows at the Irvine Improv out in California last weekend. Had a blast. Thank you all for coming. I, I, I wish we could meet, but they still don't want us going outside, but I, I can't thank you all for coming. It was a blast. But we planned it so that when I played it on Friday night and Saturday night, Sebastian came out, and uh, when I was finishing up, I brought him out, and uh, he did a bunch of time, and he had a blast, and was hilarious, and it was a lot of fun. And between Friday and Saturday, I went home with him after the show's Friday night, stayed over, came back to the club with him Saturday, so I spent some time at his house. That's what we're all talking about. June 12th. I'm playing Soul Joe's Comedy Club outside of Philly, about 40 minutes outside, a town called Royersford, PA. Two shows Saturday night, filling up. It's going to be a blast, June 12th. Lastly, sorry about the F-bombs. I'm working on it. I dropped a lot of F-bombs again. It's like, what a bad habit. Enjoy the show. Pete and Sebastian show. We're back. What a week, Sebastian Maniscalco. How you doing, bro? I'm in a good mood. Nothing can I stop know. me. What, what? I mean, could you explain? Normally you come on, it's like a uh, little hem and haw. What's the, uh, what's the change of attitude? It's, it's, uh, listen, it's Memorial Day weekend. I knew once I got back from the California shows that I had nothing lined up this weekend. It's going to be nice, 75 all weekend. Bro, I'm literally driving from Home Depot when you texted um, to go earlier. Saturday Night Fever was on. By the way, all the college kids around here are gone, and they're great. I like them, but that's 5,000 cars, not in town. And Saturday Night Fever's on. And the whole part where he's going, ah, ah, I was moving my stomach to it. That's what I'm moving. I'm going, ah, 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 <laughs> staying alive. <laughs> so I'm ready to just chill out and oh. hang, you know? Nice, nice, yeah. nice that you have something to look forward to this weekend, spending time with the family after the after the California whirlwind. We were <laughs> it was a whirlwind, dude. I I gotta say, when I left your company finally at the on Saturday, I'm like, boy, if he ain't sick of me now, then we really are friends. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to I got to mention to the to the listeners. Pete's a great house guest. Not in the way at all. Uh Lana and I were talking about him after he left. Uh just a a, a class act from top to bottom. Brought Serafina and Caruso some toys. Um yeah, man. Right. I I don't even know where to begin. Uh, with the well, weekend, I mean, where, where do we well, start? I was thinking about, you know, what to and not to say, and how to describe your house to the listeners in a nutshell, you know, without like, you know, I'm not going to walk them through the whole house. It's private. All I can say is, bro, it's like, it's like when I saw the Vatican, you know, I was thinking about it for <laughs> days afterwards. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like a fucking spiritual moving move moment, you know? You, you don't leave your house the same way you felt going in, bro. <laughs> you just reevaluate everything. <laughs> the hospitality on the vice versa, man. You guys are nothing but class. You guys are so classy. It's so much like a hotel that I even treat it like a hotel in the sense that I stole the magazine by my nightstand <laughs> for my flight home. I'm like, this is going to get me through two hours in the air. 
So, I mean, just, yeah. And your wife, yeah, I've said this before many times. She is just so fun to hang out with and so nice and, and just down to earth and cool and chill. So, yeah. And well, forget it with thanks. the kids. It, forget it with the kids, bro. I mean, your kids are adorable. And, and that boy, I mean, it's, <laughs> that's one of the most handsome little guys I've seen in a long time. You know what I mean? He's already got a nice built-in tan, <laughs> <laughs> full head of hair. <laughs> yeah. So, it, hell of a uh, visit, I, bro. Wow. I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it was... Um, let me take you through uh, kind of step-by-step step how this transpired. I went out on Friday night to the improv, and we had planned this uh, a long time ago about us getting together and performing together, what have you. Um, so just, just, just a little, little sidestep here. Pete and I haven't seen each other in a while, right? It's got to be yeah. over two years in person, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, the opening act was in the, uh, in the green room. And, um, when I first saw you, he was in there too. Great guy. Nice guy. Funny guy. But I, 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 I even told you, I go, I, when he left the room, I go, I can't talk. Like, I need to talk to you with somebody else in the room. I know. <laughs> Me and you have, it's odd, but we have a very private, personal <laughs> relationship. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not comparing me and you to Brad Pitt and Clooney, but I feel like Pitt and Clooney, when they see each other, they're like, let's take it to another room. Let's take it to another room. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it just doesn't fit right with what we talk about. You know what I mean? Oh, Even, yeah. I, know. I know. It's like you can't even get into it. Just with another person there and, and, and a stranger nonetheless, you know, it's like if you know somebody that uh, for a while he's, you know, a comedian and working with you, you kind of yeah. go you get familiar with, but a stranger, you can't, you know, you can't start talking like we normally talk with somebody else in the room. They're, they're, yeah, no. they're going to go, what the, what the hell's wrong with these guys? <laughs> you ain't kidding. Um, yeah. So that I told cool. Pete. Pete's going to drive back with me. It was about an hour, hour and 15 minutes drive back. And and Pete had sent a text a couple days prior saying, we're going to hang, you know, uh, just be ready after the show. Now, after the, the, we were going to get home at 1245, and, and Lon and I go, this guy wants to... Wow. To hang, to, to hang out at the, to the wee hours of the morning. I, the text <laughs> said, uh, we'll go until 4.30. I t you ever do this? Po I'm telling I'm telling the Maniscalcos to take naps on Friday in my text. And I go, tell Lana to bang out a nap. We'll go until about 4.30. And then I readjusted. I felt that was too much. So I sent another text going, I'm kidding. But, you know, definitely 2.30. Which still, a lot has got two kids, you know? Even me and you, that's like a long time. So I realized I uh, I probably, and then as soon as I saw you, I go, uh, hey, bro, listen, I know that text was a little rough. We don't got to stay up until 2.30. And you go, yeah, I'm telling Lana, take a nap, take a nap. <laughs> but she was up, man. Yeah, she was up. We did hang. I uh, had a few beers, some tequila. Um, so, yeah, we hung until about, what, 2.30, 2 3 o'clock. Pete went up. We went to sleep. And the next day, by the way, I was never on a three beer tour of a house before. <laughs> <laughs> the longest I ever been on was like a, a two, or two or three sip. You know, by the fourth sip, they go, and then this is the backyard. <laughs> All right, let's go have crackers. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on a tour of Sebastian's house two times. Like, you want another beer? Need another beer? <laughs> I'm like, I need a fucking, what do you call those, a walk-up? What are those things, those electric things? Yeah, I don't know, shit. <clears throat> so anyway, so, I cut you off, bro. No, no, next day, uh, Pete went to work out. He's like, I'm going to go work out. Now, you know, I don't know what I was doing while you were working out. I was catching up on some stuff. And I started looking at the watch, and I had to come into the kitchen. I go, you seen Pete? <laughs> and uh, and she's like, no. I go, she's still working out. I, you were in there for about an hour and a half, hour forty five minutes. Oh, that yeah. First of all, that gym is unbelievable. I mean, nobody in I would I would argue that that Saturday afternoon 
there was I was had the top ten best workout scenarios in the entire <laughs> United States of America. Soup to nuts. Soup. I don't know. Maybe Brad Pitt doing crunches in a fucking I don't know where. But other than that, you know. So you got to understand that workout room, which is separate from your house, has this. It's right on the edge of the property, so it looks out to the canyon, folks, with a glass wall, and there's two chairs there. So, you know. My workout is, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I, after like three sets of something, I'm like, now's a good time. I go sit out there. I sip my coffee. I do a couple one hits out into the canyon. Then I go back in. I'm doing, I mean, you when you're a kid in amusement park, it's amusement park. When you get older, you walk into a gym like that. If you're someone who works out and you're like, oh, my God, I don't even know how to use half this shit. How exciting. You know? So, yeah, I was having a ball. But then I was also figuring, you you know, well, what does it matter? You're with the kids and. But see, I'm considerate because I would have loved <clears throat> to take a steam and you show me where the steam room worked. Yeah. I, I, but why, how does that work? You? How does that? I'm, I'm going in my head. I'm like, what does that mean? Do I go get my bathing suit upstairs? I mean, there's, <laughs> there's no way this guy wants me naked it's not in his steam room. There's no way. Right? <laughs> I, I, I thought that's what you were doing in there, taking a no, steam. No, I didn't. I, I, I just didn't want to do that. And I felt like. I you told know, what, you where it was. I, I, I showed you. Here's a steam. But what do I do? Go in there naked? No, take it. Do whatever the, you want. And then someone's going to clean it after me? Yeah. Like, I, I would have, man. I would. I, I was afraid you go in there afterwards and go to Lana. Oh, my God. It's like a pubic hair from Pete in this. Oh, my God. Burn the fucking steam room, Lana. So I, I don't know. Well, you know, like, I'm still oh. treating it like a regular house where like, you know, like maybe, you know, it's impossible. It's impossible for a married couple to take care of a house that big. But that's in my head. I'm like, I don't want to make him come in here on his hands and knees with a fucking Windex and shit. Oh, uh, no, I would, I would, we would have had that sterilized after you left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. uh, so I, I gotta I gotta tell I gotta I gotta tell you this story. I don't know if you're 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 game for it, but I just gotta throw it out there, see where you take it, because it was probably one of the funniest things okay. of the weekend. Um about I don't know, before we left to go to the improv on Saturday, Pete comes up to me and he goes, I'm running a little low on uh, on some weed. You do you got any? And as you well know, the listeners, if you know me, I I have a stash. Just in right. case someone someone wants something. Right. Now, right. I hadn't I hadn't taken it out in a while, and I asked you, "Does this stuff expire?" I just have an expiration date on it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when you when you when you have no weed, then no, no, it doesn't expire. Whatever you have, I'll take. <laughs> right? so, it's like telling a starving person, "I got a couple of corns of cob, but they're getting a little brown." <laughs> <laughs> so I went to go get it. I couldn't even find. I couldn't even find where the hell I had it. Right. And I'm looking in these like little glass drawers, and and Pete's with me over my shoulder, and he goes, "Is that it?" And he he, he I don't know how the hell he saw it. Like <laughs> X-ray vision right through the. I go, holy! I go, yeah, this is it. So it comes in a in a in a, in a, in a tube. Right? right, yeah. And it, what, was, what was it called? Tarantula? Tarantula. I think you mentioned it on the cast before, but it was like, it had weight to it, man. <laughs> you would think there was a cigar in there, literally, like a big fat cigar. Yeah, yeah. So, and I had smoked this, maybe, uh, I bought two of those, and I had smoked one with Lana and uh, one of her family members a couple years ago, and I remember the damn thing knocking me on my ass. I was like, I don't know what, the, what the hell this is, but it uh, for for a non pot guy, yeah. it, it 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 lit me up pretty well. You yeah. took the damn thing out, and I, I forgot what the, it looked out. You 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 referred to it as a corn dog. <laughs> I, listen, I've been smoking a long time, but even I took it out. And went, Jesus, this thing looks like a corn dog. It like had a fuzz to it. It had a stick, and the whole thing was like fuzzy. It looked, what, what was that? I never seen pot with a fuzz on it. I never did either. I, I mean, it wasn't really pot though. It ended up it was like it was keef and hash. It was even stronger than all that, you know. Couldn't wait to take it for a spin. <laughs> so much so that 
that we were sitting outside and I even turned to Pete. I go, I got to tell you, I know I haven't performed in, in 16 months, but it was one of those days where you just felt like just hanging out in the backyard, you know, getting lit up or having a glass of wine and just kind of hanging. But we had to cut that short and get back yeah, in the but- Again, that's again, that's like hanging out in uh, the Roman, the Vatican, or something like that. And they go, "You want, you want to sit here, have a glass of wine, just you two, shut the place down, or you want to go do a show?" I mean, it was one of the most <laughs> stunning vistas sitting in your house. So yeah, it was. I was ready to just plop down, and <laughs> knock them back, toss some kids in the pool. <laughs> Would have been fun. Next time, bro. Next time. Yeah, no, next time we'll definitely make it a longer, longer stay for you. I mean, it was it was really nothing. You came and left. And it was uh you were here for twelve hours, really. Or twelve, whatever, fifteen, sixteen hours. But um yeah, it was a good hang, good catching up, what laughing about our asses off. When we were in the uh when we were in the green room and I speaking of the tarantula and I just give that whole big speech about what we do, be it an odd form. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how we got into that. I don't know. Pete goes on a rant like how comedians, it's like an art and, you know, it's a, it's just a specific talent and, and this and that and the other thing. And then he whips out and then he goes to whip out the core dog. <laughs> I'm like, we're artists, man. People think we just turn it on and off. It's, it comes naturally. It's an art form. <laughs> Excuse me while I go fire up this corn dog in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> that thing lit so it so, literally started smoking to the point where I had to I had to take it for a walk. Anyone who smokes knows that. I couldn't stay still with it. I was afraid someone would look out their window and think there was a brush fire behind a dumpster at a fucking uh, spectrum center. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, that's right. Fucking ball. What a uh, trip. No, yeah, it was it was fantastic. Now I I wanted to cast because it was fresh on my mind on Monday. I didn't know where you were, but when you had text, I'm like, hey, you want to jump on a cast? And you were you were in the midst of getting on another flight. I I I know something that had to happen on the way back. No, and, and uh, well, well, I, I, I mean I I just booked an insane layover, but uh, I do have two two things happen on the way back that I want to. Get your take on the one was uh, a guy uh, kept uh, on the whole flight home. I had the uh, this time I had the window seat, and the guy kept constantly pushing into my back. All right, and I'm trying to sleep, and I know it, wa- I, it wasn't his feet. Uh, like like he wasn't kicking. It was um, I I because I did a couple. Did you ever do that where you you s- pretend you're looking for somebody in the back of the plane, but, but, you, <laughs> yeah, 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 you, but you make quick eye contact with the other person, which is like, by the way, all of a sudden, after two hours of the air, I find out my friend <laughs> Jerry's in the back, and I, <laughs> I want to give him a, see how he's doing? I've been solo this whole time. We all know what's going on. I just hit the brake lights in my car. That's what that, you know, you know what it is? I turn around, I do that fake look down, I make eye contact, stop kicking or whatever you're doing with the fucking seat. That's what's going in my head, right? So, so then about an hour later, there's about an hour left in the flight. I'm like, oh, I'm doing a nice lean against the window, and I'm just starting to fall asleep. And he pushes it in again, right? Now I do the turnaround, and I got my arm up on the armchair, and I look back over, and I go, stop pushing into the back of the seat. You keep waking me up. And he goes, I'm getting something out of the, out of the chair. I go, how much shit you got in there? <laughs> And then I turned back around, and that's the end. He was like 19, 20 years old, man. What's with these young kids talking back? I'm 50. When a 50-year-old told me to stop doing something, God, done, right? There's no respect. I'm getting stuff out of my... What are you getting out of here, you fucking video game? Shut it down. There's an hour left. You... How many times did you fly, too, by the time you were 19? Like, two, three times in your life? It's like a Greyhound bus to these kids. Holy shit. <laughs> Right, and then here's the other question. So I had a fly. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Now, before you, before you, before you do this, do you yeah. look to go? Is this kid flying with his parents? That is his was dad- the fake. That was the fake look back for Jerry. I did a total evaluation. <laughs> he wasn't with the other two people. He couldn't beat me up. He wasn't white trash where they would punch me in the face. You know that too. You know the kind of person. There's certain people that you think might get volatile. I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you know, this guy is probably just, a, you know, he'll get the message, you know. There's, most people on a plane, I would say it to because, you know, what are you going to beat me up on a plane? Even if you do, as soon as we touch down, you're going to get arrested. It's not like you can run away. Yeah, but, well, uh, there's, a lot, there, there's a lot of that hostility on a plane and then nowadays. People are getting in fights <clears throat> left and right. So uh, so you assess the situation. You, you, uh, you uh, looked at him and you said non-threat. And you went back and and, and and gave him a piece of your mind. Non-threat, and it was also a warning, which he made eye contact with me when I looked back. I mean, how? Come on, come on, wake up, wake up! You know what's going on when I do that. Yeah, no, now. they don't. They don't know though. They don't know. They, 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 you would think that would be a signal, but they don't know. They You're don't right. Think like us. You're right. I've actually looked back, and the person I'm looking back, they looked back. <sighs> oh my God. Like they were missing something. You know? You ever see that move? I'm, wait, 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 wait. What happened? Wait, you look back. And I do the turn fake, fake look back to oh, pretend yeah. I'm looking for something, and then the person I'm really turning around to look at, yeah, yeah. they think there's something to see behind me. Oh, so behind, God. so they, I'm like, are you that dumb? It was really to you, dumb dumb. <laughs> Holy shit! Actually, you know, I got a wave of heads all fucking. Turned around. <laughs> so, so yeah. So there's that, and then the other thing is, it's such an art form, bro, to say. How much shit do you have in there? Well, that's like, I'm not calling you a loser. I'm not telling you to stop. Uh, you know, it's just very, it's like, what the fuck? It, it makes you sit down and think, and be, you know, you're an idiot, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> so, wait a minute, wait a minute. You do, you do this, it, does it stop? Bro, it stopped. It absolutely okay. stopped. Now, here's what I wonder. After something like that happens and you are still in the vicinity of the person, when you have to get off the plane, isn't it awkward now that you're standing up, he's standing up, and you're both waiting to get off the plane? Do you turn to break that tension? Do you go, do you say anything? How do you, how do you deal with the after effect? I well, you're right. There is a tension. It's underlying. I just don't look back. I don't look back. I look at my phone and I just try to give off an aura or an air of I I forgot about it after I said. It. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Meanwhile, in my head, I'm like, "What the fuck? You right there? What are you gonna do? You're gonna say something? You know?" But the whole, the whole time, <laughs> the whole bro. I mean, as soon as we get out of the tunnel, I'm banging her right to get out of. Yeah, just to just to, to like let him walk off. Absolutely, you're right. You're absolutely right about all that. I had another guy too on the way. Um, I meant to say my layover when I was getting off in between when I in Atlanta. You know how we all get off. You peel out one row at a time, one row at a time, and they even encourage you. Don't do that stand up in the aisle. Wait till it's your row. So I'm trying to be, well, actually, I don't have a choice. I didn't have the aisle. I was in the uh, end. So I'm waiting, and it's now our row. The two people next to me, they get up and go. Now, on the person on the other side, they're slow to get up. Now, I go to get up. The guy, the row behind me, he thinks he sees a quick opening, and he starts to go. And then I step, and he goes, oh, and he stops, and he goes, oh, I'm sorry. And I go, don't be, because you're not going. And I just kept going. Oh, and I cut in front. Of him. Well, what the fuck? Right? And I didn't look back at him at all. I go, don't be, because I'm going. I said, don't be, because I'm going. And I just went like that, you know? Oh, I mean, man. No, no, got... <laughs> he knew what he was doing, and he got busted. And he got busted. <laughs> right? I don't get as embarrassed as they do. Bro, I could walk down a plane naked in my flip flops, <laughs> and I really wouldn't even fucking lose sleep over it. <laughs> Fuck them all. <laughs> <laughs> right, man? Oh, my God. Here, here, here's one I can't stand, right? Let's say you got the aisle. Flight's over. You hit the gate. Bing, it goes up. Now, I sit there because let's say I'm 16 rows back, right? Mm -hmm. The guy at the window gets up, and he looks like he's going to do the 400. You know, like he's in the starting block. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going, guy? You got not only the person next to you, but you got me. I lead this thing. 
I decide when row 28 gets the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep cursing. That's so great. Oh, I've done man. that in my youth where I've been in a window and I lean over to you and I go, my back is just killing me. I just got to get up. And so what are you going to do? You're going to make my back? By the way, bro, on, I'm not lying. I can't believe I forgot to tell you this. <sighs> Waiting to get on at California, I had an early flight. Bro, I had a six and a half hour layover. That's the whole nightmare of that flight. Oh my God. Which I booked, not even realizing it. So anyway, I got like, you know, your basic seat. I remember I told you I had the shitty seats in the middle. This time I had an aisle seat. I'm like, man, I just gotta get my bag settled. I wanna go to sleep. I swear I, to God, I did this. I went up with, uh, you know when they say people with special needs? Yeah. Like, I didn't go up, but then when they started boarding first class, I'm like, fucking hit, man. It's a special need. Fuck that. And I went up, and I put my phone on a thing, and as it beeped, I leaned over to the lady. I go, I just had hip replacement surgery. I just want to, and she goes, just please go, sir. Okay, sir. Like that. Like, I don't think she believed me. She didn't care, but she wasn't going to argue it with me. And I did a two limp a walk away from her and a light rub. And when, I'm down, <laughs> and when I'm down the tunnel, I realized none of it mattered. But I didn't feel good about it, bro. I'm not going to do it again. Because I even had my hip thing in my wallet ready to show her if it came down to that. Uh, but it just felt that I was abusing the system to get on early so I could start sleeping. Even though you have a legitimate excuse. I mean, you do have the car. I feel great, though. I, I feel great, though. It's not bothering me. I could lift your bag and my bag. Instead, I'm going up whispering. I just want to get settled. I don't want to hold anyone up. I had the window. I just wanted to get the napping. Um, speaking of the hip. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we took a hike on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. Uh, Lana, Stunning hike. You and myself, it took a hike. And I say, right in the beginning of the hike, I asked Pete, I go, you all right to do this, you know, with the hip? And I didn't, I forgot to tell you this. And I'll tell the listeners, as I'm telling you, as we're walking down the hill, Pete shows us his scar. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. It was a little revealing. I, I, <laughs> Lottie even turned to me afterwards and she goes, I haven't seen that much pubic hair since. Get out of here. I did a slight yeah, lie. <laughs> that's, a, that's not true. <laughs> oh, we're exaggerating, but. Yeah, like he he pulled he pulled his fucking pants down to show, to show us the scar mid hike. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's the closest thing to a tattoo I'll ever have, bro. <laughs> By the way, uh, right before we went hiking, Lana's like, "We're all going hiking," and she goes, "You don't, you don't mind if I come?" Do I go, Lana? Two men hiking? You have to come. <laughs> 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 I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, that was a nice oh, hike. God. By the way, I have a question before we move on from flying, because there's a lot of uh, the Mexican culture in California. And again, I've, I've said how much I love Mexico and the Mexican culture. And another thing I like a lot that they do, um, the respect they have for their Stetson hats. Those white hats that Mexican men like to wear a lot, like a cowboy hat. It's a cowboy. Oh hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when they're going through security and it's in their hand, like like a guitar would be for a musician. And then when they get on the plane, they're it's their carry on, and they're putting it in the bin, right? Now, if that's your carry on, and that's your, you have the right to that space, whether you put a bag there or your gorgeous hat. That's how I feel. So many other people were getting huffy and puffy about the hats. What's your take about uh, a nice cowboy hat? And if it's taking up one carry-on space, do you have a right to put it up <laughs> above? I got to say this, man. Listen. <laughs> With a hat, you, you can't, like, squeeze in a suitcase next to a hat because you're going to ruin the hat, right? If it's a suitcase... You could put yours and like shimmy it, but with a hat, 
it's yeah. it's taking up a lot of space. It's almost like taking up two spaces because you can't manipulate the space the way you want it. The, the, so, you're right. That whole that whole compartment becomes that va- va- fragile. Yeah, if you want, you bring a <laughs> you bring a carry case for the hat. If so you want, if you want, you take your you, you take your fucking horse instead. <laughs> oh, do they have carry cases for hats like that, bro? Yeah, oh. yeah you, you 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 put it in a carry case. Well, that's, 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 you have that's what you have to do then. If you don't have a carry case, uh, and American you, cowboys do, but. Have, when you see a especially American guy with a cowboy hat on a plane with the cowboy boots, they they just seem more out of place than a priest at a goddamn nightclub. You know what I mean? <laughs> they say, uh, "Listen, you can't put a hat in the overhead." I wouldn't put my hat there. First of all, I wouldn't wear a hat on a plane. I I I I put it in a case. I check it in. Well, like, what I are we mean, wearing, what, what are we, what are we wearing hats inside anyway for? I mean, they, that, they, that, they, you, they, they used to be a, a faux pas. You take your hat off when you're indoors, right? They they do take them off. Some of them have them online, but a lot of men have them off in their hand already. So they're respecting the old politeness of that. But you know, you can't to some of these men, bro. These hats are like, it's like you know, it's like. It would be you like the lady saying, telling me to check my chains. I'm like, check my chains, lady. What? I don't even understand what you're saying right now. <laughs> yeah, but you ain't you ain't putting your chains in the overhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, man. I, just, I don't even take I, my chains off when I go through security, so they always got to pull me aside and do a wand on the chain. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get into this here. All right. Yesterday, I went uh, to the DMV. My license needs to be renewed. Right? It expires in July. Plus, in California here, you have to get what they call this real ID by October 21st in order for you to board an airplane. I don't know why. You just need this real ID stamp on your license. Okay. I go down, I go to the Santa Monica DMV because I feel uh, maybe a better group of people in Santa Monica opposed to Hollywood. Now, I've been to the Hollywood one. It's like, a, it's a nightmare over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Santa Monica's right by the beach. I figure I go over there. But uh, no matter what DMV you go to, I don't care if you're going to one in the in the Hamptons or a, the one in uh in, in Hollywood, it, it's the same. It's the same thing, right? Horror. Horror. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's awful. And now with the COVID, you know, you can't wait inside. So there's a line outside. Now, I'm looking at the line outside. Two people have their own chair that they brought with a sun hat and are reading a book. Now, I'm like... Did they come to the DMV last time and go, next time I'm bringing a chair? <laughs> or, or, <laughs> you think they had a chair in their car and said, I got to get my chair with the, with this line. I mean, uh, I, I just, I, I saw that. And I was like, man, that's preparation to come to the DMV with your I own. Li- I, I, I like that move. I'm not seeing that as white trash. And uh, whether, you, whether you put the chairs in and said, let's go, or whether they're already in the car, it's like, you know, make lemons out of lemonade, they say, right, bro? Why not get some uh, sun? Yeah, no, I, I get it. I just felt it was a little too relaxed. I, I don't know. I just, I, I, not my move. You know, if you all did shares, you got a point, because then one person working there will go like, uh, Susie, go check on the line. She'll go out there go, everyone's playing beach ball and shit. They seem fine. <laughs> all right. All right. I was going to say hustle, but if everyone's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the kicker. In that line, yeah. it's the no appointment line. So, <laughs> so when you go to the DMV, there's a appointment line yeah. and a non-appointment line. And I'm always looking at the non-appointments going, why didn't you make an appointment? <laughs> I I don't know if I would either. Maybe they just found some free time. Is is the is the appointment line always like way longer? And wait, but I'm saying the non-appointment line way longer usually. 
non-appointment line is always extremely long, and the appointment line is short and quick, right? Really? So if you had like a yeah. two o'clock appointment, can, can you, what time do you have to be there? One fifty-five. Example: I had a ten forty appointment. I showed up to ten uh, ten twenty-five. I was in by ten thirty. All right, bro, oh, that's unbelievable. Oh, quick, quick. So, so there's no more problems with DMV for you. Well, not not necessarily no more problems, but once I get in, now the problems start. Right. Oh, all right. I go up to the, I go up to the thing, and um, I'm wondering why, and and I and I briefly mentioned this with the half top at the with the guy with the half top uh, doing coffee. At the DMV, there's no uniform. You cannot decipher who works there and who's there for a license. Now, I give the guy my passport. My social security card, two forms of verification that I live at a specific address, and I give him my th my thumbprint. Why is he in a Dennis Rodman jersey? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more, bro. Not only should he be in a uniform, but just hearing about that, there should be like one FBI agent right next to each one of these people. I'm bowling the whole process. But the only thing you didn't give was blood and saliva. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm sitting there, and I don't know if you've seen this. You ever see the remnants of deodorant on someone wearing a, like a no sleeve? Oh, so oh. He, had, he had the jersey on, and then his hair, he looked like he dipped it in flour, you know, and oh. came to work. That look. Oh, oh come on. Are you kidding me? He looked like his armpits was had snow on him. Listen. <laughs> Okay. That, you bring up a great question here because when, especially when you do the underarm where it leaves clumps, okay? Now, when you shower at the end of that day, if you're showering and there's clumps that aren't coming out, no, you, you don't keep those in and build off them with the next arm rub down. <laughs> you scrub that shit out. There's no, right? I mean, you keep doing that, you'll have clumps in there from three months ago, right? Ah, oh, this guy looked like he had ornaments hanging off his uh -oh. arm hair, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. Who's wearing a tank top <laughs> taking my fucking passport? This is insanity. I mean, what's in his other hand? A 12-pack of cores getting ready to go to the beach? This is... Bro, I don't... Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I was like... This is California he, for you. Well, listen, I don't know if this is nationwide... That that the uh, you know each state is um, is providing uniforms. I don't know if you go to Wyoming and they have uniform. I don't know. But even if the the state doesn't have money to give people uniforms, isn't there a meeting going? All right, guys, we don't have a a budget for uniforms, but if you could just wear a black collared shirt to work, right? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, he, he just let's all try and have some semblance of the same thing. But you can't do that anymore, bro. You can't no, you make can't, so, it's illegal make, to make someone um, so, you, uh, someone could come in in a diaper. When I was writing on the show, someone could literally be in a diaper and they could be drinking out of a baby bottle. <laughs> and you just have to go, oh, that's a great idea, Seth. Yeah, maybe we'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, come on, man! It's like going to—it's like a football player coming to a football <coughs> game with roller skates on. It's just—it's—it's—it's it's, it's not the uniform. It's so not. <laughs> I check in and I hear behind me, "Yeah, no, us we could not, and you don't." Do, it, it was inaudible. It was—it right. was, uh, right. was an accent. I turn around, and he's got a man knot. All right. All right, and a mask on, and he's yelling through the mask, and he's yelling to the person working at the DMV, "You speak English?" And they're like, "Sir, sir." Now, have you ever been in a in a scenario where you're hearing an argument at a business? And you start to take the side of either the per like in your head, like oh, you yeah. ass you assess like you give it thirty seconds and you go, what team am I on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. 
Sometimes got- to the point where I'm like, oh, I hope someone asks me my opinion. I hope someone asks me my opinion. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Okay. It got to a point where I was on the side of the DMV lady because this guy was, was out, you know, just outrageous. And I got to the point where I was going to turn around and get involved, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then I'm like, what am I, what am I doing? What am I, a hero here at the DMV. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> My luck, the, the time I get involved, this guy's got a shotgun and, 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 and we're all gone. So, yeah. so I asked the, the, the guy, I go, what the hell's this guy's problem? He goes, it happens every day. I go, what's, what is it? He goes, they come in, they don't have the proper forms or they don't have what you need to get the license or get the ID or what have you. And we tell them we can't process it, go home and get it and make another appointment. And they get upset because A, they can't get what they came for and B, that they have to re make the appointment right like they took the day probably off right the cover right. yeah yeah my question is is it that hard to follow instructions for people like whatever you need you just read the thing you need passport social security and two forms of an address possibly a utility bill or a tax bill that right. verifies where you live <laughs> Is it that hard for people to do this? <laughs> Where are we as a society? It's really hard for about 85 million people, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I'm flabbergasted. Like, I almost, and, and, I, and I hate to pat myself on the shoulder here, but I almost wanted to have a camera crew with me to document how you do it you know like like i pride myself going into a place like that where you need this document that document sign here put your thumb here right right oh oh, oh by the way they, they asked me huh, uh how's your eyesight i said well i just had a uh an eye exam and i can't you know i need glasses to see far all right look up there and they got the chart huh? yeah. Read the first line. I read the first line. All right. Now I'm re- I'm reading the thing through. They got like a glass partition between myself and the person. The glass partition is dirty. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like nobody came down and, to wipe the saliva off for the other the, the other uh, thousand people before me. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm I'm reading this thing through spit marks. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, it's like cover your, rain, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rainstorm. Cover your right eye. Cover your left eye. And she's like, "All right." And it was simple. I mean, I, I was like, "Did they make the letters bigger uh, within the last ten years?" Because people <laughs> right. were fa- people were failing this thing, <laughs> right. and they weren't. The DMV wasn't getting the thirty eight dollars <laughs> to process well, the stuff. <laughs> they probably also go. You know what? This guy clearly does have glasses. If he says he has glasses, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's any, it's interesting to know if there's any f- human judgment put into it, you know? Like, like what if another guy was there and he's squinting really hard, but he can say all the same letters as you, but he's squinting really hard. Do they go, oh, I'm going to have to say, go get your glasses and make a new appointment. While I was doing the test, yeah, this guy was texting someone. He isn't even looking at me. Is, <laughs> Shit. Is this the guy in the Rodman uh, t-shirt yeah. with the with the armpits? Yeah. Oh my god. He's, he, I, he was he's checking his Instagram. And I, I could have been reading anything. He's like, yeah, all right, that's good. That's good. You know, like, they don't care. It's a yeah. just get him through. Get him through. So, but the way I the way I had the documents ready and and yeah. neat and neat. Like yeah, I, yeah. Br- I, br- I bring a little, I bring a little, uh, what do you call them? an envelope, one of those big envelopes, and I take it out, and it's like 
impressed. It's like it's oh, like wow. the paperwork went to the dry cleaners before I got there. You know, yeah, I'm looking yeah. around. I, I, everybody else got it in the pocket. They're unfolding stuff. Is this the document? I, just, I, I know it's the document. I just slide it underneath the glass <laughs> with, <laughs> with the passport open to the picture. Yeah. You know, you don't gotta you don't gotta do any extra work. I've done it for you. You're the guy that makes them go, oh my god, imagine I had all this guy all day <laughs> long. I could really get into some texting. <laughs> no, dude. I feel like when you say this kind of stuff, like you ever think of, like if you were a businessman, you know, like an architect or something, and you're wearing a nice suit and you're giving a presentation to try and get the job. Can you imagine? Like I know for for sure your teleprompter machine would never malfunction. Everybody, <laughs> everybody would have like the most expensive bottles of water around them with their own little mini co um, coffee pots, right? Just... They'll be like, I don't like his idea, but I want to hang out with this guy. The presentation. <laughs> I mean, who has caviar for the follow-up discussion? <laughs> Cologne to go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cologne to go. You ever you ever go do one of those presentations, those business presentation, and the, and the slide don't work, or or, oh. or, or or they go to say, and and this is a pie graph of what we're doing, and then they do, and there's no pie graph. It's yeah. like it's like a it's like a photo of the United States. I'm like oh, I didn't know how that got in there. That wouldn't be my presentation. <laughs> tight, tight, yeah. You'd be like, you'd be on the cutting edge too, like 3D. Everyone, you'd hand out little glasses right before you hit the lights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just in past times, you can look at it. How about touching it? All right, put on your glasses <laughs> now, everybody. <laughs> See, now I always felt like, for me, I always thought uh, defending somebody in a trial would be a lot of fun. You know, I mean, I'd hate to have to get go to jail because I suck, but just to get in front of a jury in a nice suit, lean over to one of the older female jurors and go, did you get your coffee today, hon? Don't worry, I'll try not to keep you long today. Oh, she'll be like, fucking Dean Martin is defending this guy. Right <laughs> <laughs> you bring up a good point. If you're a lawyer, can you give the jury... I don't know, a dozen donuts before, before, before you go out there, can you, can you guys, hey guys, have a donut while I explain. Right. Yeah. I, 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 a, a piece I, of candy. I, I, I got, I'm popping a piece of candy. I go, excuse me. I pop one in as a, a juror up front. I go, well, one hun, just flip one to her. We each share a butterscotch. Are you telling me she ain't on my side no matter what as we're licking those butterscotches? Yeah. Just, just you know, it's like you, you ever watch a lawyer and right away you go, he's a dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I would love to come out there with a suit on and just like and explain to the jury what they just saw. Right? I'd come out there and go, did you believe any of that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I had to open up a window to let some of that shit fly out. Am I alone? I mean, are you? <laughs> Can we light a candle in here to get the scent of bullshit out of the room? <laughs> and then they go, strike that. You can strike it all you want. It's buried already in their heads. <laughs> I never understood that when they go to the jury. Uh, please omit what they just said. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm going to be thinking about that tonight. <laughs> Even if I wasn't thinking about it, I'm like, what is he admitting? What part? What part? <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm doubling down on remember it. You're right. You're right. I mean, as soon as you I go in, go, yeah, he was right. That guy was full of shit. <laughs> oh, I mean, once you tell somebody they, they have to unhear it, they, it's actually double embedded into their brain. If yeah. I say, listen, you can't, you can't, you just forget what I said. You can't forget it. You heard it already. So I don't, I don't agree with that at all. And number two, and number two on the, uh, on the, uh, oh God, what was I going to say? I'd get the judge involved too. Like, like, the, like the judge is always like off and, and, and it's the jury and the lawyer. 
and the judge will say you know, overruled or whatever. But I'd come up and I'd talk to the judge first, and then I'd talk to the jury, and I'd, I, I would think you'd have to come out with something funny. I don't know why a lot of lawyers don't have a comedy writer. Right, right. Just giving yeah. them little little, little jokes. Like, 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 it depends jokes, on the like, crime, though. It depends on the crime, you know what I'm saying? You can't have a weaving family of the victims crying in row three, and you're looking at the judge going, did you get those cronuts I put on your desk? This <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, saying, <laughs> I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying the stuff that you were just saying, like, can we light a candle in oh, here? To get yeah. The, like, hey, those? yeah, right? You're doing what you got to do for the... For the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm, what no, I'm saying. I, I hear you. Now, what about, can you curse? Are you allowed to swear when you're a lawyer? Like, like, can you go uh, right up there and be like, wow, we all know we fucking did it. All right, folks, let's be honest <laughs> about that. It's just a matter of proof. Oh, no, no, you can't curse, you know, to, to make your point. Or is that like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's uh judge by judge that, uh, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to ask a judge or a lawyer to see if. If cursing is uh, accepted within the, the court of law, but um, yeah, I mean, law, lawyer is one of those jobs. That, but you know, I wouldn't want to study the, the 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 law. You know, I would just want to do the performance. That's why. That's why you. That and it's because of that that there's so many would be great lawyers like guys like me and you that can't do it. I, because I'm not doing that either. But if I was just up there, I'd be like, why did I do this, folks? Because I love it. I love defending the innocent. I love being here. I love being part of this. Oh, I feel, I just, it's a performance every time. Right? Oh, God. You got you got a captive audience. Not only you got the jury, I'd turn and I'd talk to the audience. You never see that either. Why doesn't the lawyer just turn around and go, guys, I don't know whose team you're on. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what about just the face that you do in comedy sometimes when you'll say something that's crazy and you just look at the crowd? If like the guy s says something that you don't believe, like, well, that's when I went home and nobody saw you go home. Nobody saw me go home. You just <laughs> look over at the whole crowd. You don't say nothing. You just give them a look. How does you can't strike that. I'm just looking yeah. out. Yeah. Right. What? Why, when the lawyer is talking to the jury, right? Let's say if I'm the defense lawyer and the prosecutor's talking to the jury and he says something, what's wrong with me getting out of my seat and just looking at the audience going, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's it. Strike that. Strike. Strike what? <laughs> my hands up in the air. Look, I, what are you striking? I don't know what you're striking. <laughs> you're giving uh, a signal that you think it's bullshit. Well. You know, I hear you. So I want to before we before we wrap this up, do I got time? Yeah, I want to tell this story. I told it to you in the in the in the in the dressing room, but <sighs> my nanny went on the the Starline tour. All right. Okay. Yeah. And the Starline tour, they show celebrities' homes. Okay. Now our home backs up to a road where the the buses. I see them all day long. The buses. I saw one over. when I was there. Yeah, me yeah. and Yolanda were eating. I could see him right across the way with a mm -hmm. nice pair of binoculars. You could get a good look see into the backyard for sure. Yeah. So we've always gone. What are they? What are they saying in these tours? What do they talk about when they pull over? Right. Right. So my nanny was always interested in going on a, uh, and she and she's like, I don't want to see what they say about the house, right? Sure. So she sends me a video. And the guy's like, all right, everybody. See that community right there? Home of Britney Spears, Denzel Washington. And that home you see right there, the white home. That's right. Ain't no hollaback girl, Gwen Stefani's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Now, Gwen Stefani got that house in a divorce from Gavin Rossdale, and it's been on the market for three years now. Uh, da, 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 da. And, you know, sometimes you could see her in the backyard playing with her kids. And then my nanny goes, Who lives there? Uh, Gwen Stefani of No Doubt, everybody. Da, 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 da. Now, 
Am I mad that I'm not on the on the tour? No. Okay. <laughs> but I have I have a scenario of why. Of why. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now some people say maybe they they don't know the just the buying and selling of homes. They don't keep track of that. But here's my theory. My theory is the owner of the tour got the drivers together and go, listen, guys, you know that house that Stefani had over there in the white one? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, some guy, some comedian I never heard of, so Sebastian Maniscalco bought it. Now, go out today and tell them that the comedian Sebastian Maniscalco bought the house and see what type of reaction you get, right? So my theory is they went out. Comedian Sebastian Scalco, all that. You might have listened to him on the Pete Sebastian show, and then the whole, the whole bus started to turn and go. Who oh, is that man? <laughs> couple. Hands. I'm sorry. Who'd you say? What lives there? Uh, Sebastian. So he came back at night and goes, boss. <coughs> I did six runs. No one knows who this guy is, and the boss goes. Fuck it, just say Stefani still <laughs> He kept coming back 10 minutes earlier because usually they want to stop in front of Stefani's for photos. I say, Matt Scalca, like, just keep the pedal down, keep the pedal down. <laughs> Half of them stop looking out the window now because they're Googling Matt Scalco on their phone <laughs> through the fucking canyon going down to Mulholland. <laughs> oh, shit, bro. Oh, well, God. after the De Niro movie, forget about oh, it. By the way. Either. That's a great one to tell on a uh, one of those late night talk show hosts when you're plugging a new movie. So, and at the end of it, like if you're talking to Kimmel, you go, "So Jimmy, maybe after this next movie, they'll actually want to stop and call my house now." <laughs> Damn, that's funny, oh, bro. Yeah, it was it was, uh, it was funny. Uh, all right, bro, I gotta I gotta bounce. Yeah. Yeah. Good 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 chatting with it you. Was. Uh, and and again, uh, you guys are always welcome here. Uh, next time you got to bring the girls, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll do it all over again. All right, man. Great hanging. All right. Take care. Later.